In the race to be the global leader in artificial intelligence, China wants to be in first place by 2030. And it's making its presence known in the AI startup world. Beijing is funding 48% of the global startups in that space. The U.S. is second with 38%. This according to research firm CB Insights. China is also planning to invest at least $7 billion in AI by 2030. So just which country will win this race? We sat down with Kai Fu Lee, CEO of Sinovation Ventures, who authored a new book on the topic, AI Superpowers, China, Silicon Valley, and the New World Order, to find that out, as well as what people are missing in the conversation about AI. Well, I think people still have a mistaken assumption that AI is about this human intelligence. And in the book, I tried to really clarify a few things. One is that AI is a very simple but very effective way in one domain to do something. Secondly, China is really good at implementing AI, while the U.S. is good at uh, the research and technology. And thirdly, this AI is going to make a huge um, uh, impact to the world, including creating a lot of value, wealth, uh, implementable in every domain, but also causing some challenges like um, uh, displacing jobs, for example. We talk a lot about China versus the U.S. in AI. Is it really a zero-sum game, or are parts of it a zero-sum game? I think it's not at all a zero-sum game because uh, Chinese VCs invest in Chinese AI companies who build products for Chinese customers. And American VCs invest in American companies who build products for American or uh, developed world con uh, customers. Uh, the win, the gain of any Chinese company in AI does not come at the expense of any American company. So it's like two parallel universes running. So I think we ought to work together if, if the climate would allow it. So should the U.S. be worried about China surpassing this country in AI and vice versa? Well, in research, China's not going to surpass U.S. for another 20 years with, with or without any um, regulations. I mean, U.S. is just so far ahead in research. Uh, however, in implementation, China has everything it needs. There's nothing U.S. can do that will slow down China. So it's so, so kind of pointless in AI uh, to, to look at how to regulate. How confident are you in the U.S. administration, the current administration, the Trump's administration, handle on AI and new technology and the consequences, especially given, um, you know, some of the, the, the choices that um, the White House has made in taking on China? Well, I think the trade, the trade the, um, dispute includes a lot of issues outside AI. But I think the AI issue, I don't see a lot of in-depth understanding. Um, and and I, I saw in the Obama administration, the AI white papers were very, very well, very thoughtful, well-written, inclusive of a lot of experts. But I, I don't currently see that in the uh, new administration. So what are the dangers of that? Well. <laughs> I think uh, China is um, uh, actually quite willing to work with the U.S. I mean, in, in, a, in a theoretic, theor theoretically, if we could um, invest in a company that has a U.S. research and technology and the China data and market access, that's going to be the fastest growing. It's going to accelerate AI. And I think if the current um, policies makes that not possible, I think it's at both countries' loss. If it's not a zero-sum game, then should the U.S. not be worried about China stealing its IP? I mean, because that is in part what the president cites as his concerns. I think the IP issues is a universal concern. Everyone, including the Chinese, now see the errors of some companies. And I think any agreement that uh, protects IP, I think, will be welcomed um, by China. But I think to, in, to include everything in this uh, trade deficit uh, is, uh, is too much. Do you believe that AI will share our values? Well, I think at this point, AI is just our tool. We program AI, we train it with data, we tell it what to optimize. So there's um, no independent thinking by AI to not share our values. However, I acknowledge that, for example, when Facebook programmed their AI to get us to read the newsfeed more often, it has certain side effects. I think those side effects can be studied and uh, controlled. Um, I'm not uh, with the, some of the uh, more extreme views that AI will reach singularity and uh, be smarter than people. I you don't think that AI will become superhuman? No. I don't think it will happen 
for sure, not in the 20, 30 years. But what if Possibly someone programs never. it to have that capability? Well, we don't know how to program it. It's still missing about 10 breakthroughs. If you look at the last 62 years of history of AI, there has only been one breakthrough. To reach the point of superhuman intelligence, we need at least 20 more breakthroughs. And when we start seeing five or eight breakthroughs, uh, we'll, we can revisit the question. But now, no one knows at all how to build it. I think many of the remarks about exaggerated AI impact in the world are made by non-AI people, which is why AI people need to stand up and say, wait a minute, before you make those projections about dystopia, let's see some engineering progress. So Elon Musk is wrong. Yes.